All right, so welcome back. In the previous lecture, we got our interface set up. We're getting some buttons so that we can actually create some operations in our game to affect our health, food, and money. Um, so now we're ready to create our first Playmaker's finite state machine. And sometimes you'll see just FSM. That's what FSM stands for, is finite state machine. And we'll learn about different states and how these work by example. That's why we're building a game. So to create our first finite state machine, we have to kind of decide where we're going to put it. And I'm going to begin by creating uh, like a game manager object. And we'll put the finite state machine on that. And uh, you could add it to the main camera. I did do that in the previous um, in, in previous lectures, I've done that. It, it'll work fine. But I think it's kind of nice just to have its own object. And it's a common practice in Unity. So what we can do is we can come up here under Game Object and just say Create Empty. Or we can come down here and right click and say Create Empty. So I'm going to just do that. I'm going to right click and Create Empty. And it just says Game Object here. And I'm just going to change this to say Game Manager. And so this is where we're going to manage the main components of our game and operations. And later we'll be creating other finite state machine on other objects and they will interact with this game manager. So when we create an empty object all we get over here is one component. So each of these panels over here is a component. We have the transform component because we just created this empty object. If we click on one of our buttons you'll see that it has a rec transform as well or you know a more complex component here for that as well as you know an image uh, which has given us the background of the, of the button here as well as this button script that's going to manage the interaction and so forth but each of these panels here with this divided horizontal line each one of these is a separate component that is on that object game manager now has a transform and it, this basically keeps the position of where it is in our game space and we don't particularly care for our game manager where it's located we can go in here and zero this out if we wanted for example it just doesn't matter where it's at we're, we're gonna do now is with add component we can just type in playmaker here and you'll see that we have a playmaker FSM as one of our available options to add a component so we're gonna just gonna pick that and you'll see that it's added this in here and given it a default FSM for the name. And there's really not much to this right now. We are going to get the real power of making the diagrams by clicking this edit button just like this. And when we click edit, we get the Playmaker editor here for our finite state machines. And the way this is going to work is whenever this game starts up, whenever we play our game, this start event right here, this is a start event, is going to fire off and it's going to do whatever here is in our state. And what we're going to do is we're going to update, we want to update this health label and our food labels and so forth so that they will work with variables within our game. And we always have to start somewhere and I'm just going to jump over here to variables and we're going to create one for health. So we'll start with health. And we're going to keep track of these values as integers. Notice how under here, variable type, it's defaulted to float. And float just means that we're going to have decimals. We'd have 3.1, 3.2, 5.7, um, whereas integers are whole numbers, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 4. Our life simulator game, we're going to just use integers. We don't need a uh, floating variable. So I'm going to change this to integer. And we know that, uh, like for our example, we want it to start with 100. So after I click Add, so we click Add here, we now can see our health variable. And I can set the value here to 100. So variables, um, just like in any language in Playmaker, are basically locations in memory that are going to hold these values. And we can just as easily, when we click here, add one for food as well. So I type food and hit add. And so now we have two variables and if I click again I can add one for money. So these three variables are going to basically keep tracking of these core attributes and values for our life simulator game. 
Now the question is, how do we get it so that the values that we have here update the labels that we have here? Now one of the things right off the bat is that as we currently have our labels set up, we really have um, two pieces of information here. We have the health colon part, which is the label part uh, that will never change. And then we have the 100 here that's going to be what we want to load out of our variable, and it's going to change all the time. You know, that's, this is going to be changing. So we want to separate these. And um, we could add them together and display them, but for our purposes, especially to keep our finite state machine simple at first, we're going to want to create a separate label for this number. So to do that, I'm going to click on health label text and I'm just going to get rid of this hundred. So it's really clear this is the health label text, not the health value but the health label. So what that means is I can just right click this and duplicate it and I can just then drag here over and this is where we're going to actually put the the value. So I can change this to say, and you can just click on this and rename it here as well, health text. So we're dropping the label part and just calling it health text. So it's really clear now this isn't the label, this is actually the text that we want to show for health. And obviously we want to change this to be like that or that. But what I usually do is I would do something like this. And what, the reason I'm doing this, I'm putting this as like just a little placeholder, is that that way I know that my application is working and my finite state machine is actually updating this value. Otherwise, I could be confused. If I, made, if I left this as, as 100, then how would I know if I really got that value out of my variable and updated it on the screen or if my, you know, uh, or if it's just displaying the initial value I've set here. So we want this initial value to not represent something that would confuse us into thinking that the that the program is changed that is has not changed this value. So let's go back to our game manager now. And we're gonna go ahead under state one and just call this uh, update uh, UI for update user interface. So UI is a common uh, shortcut for saying user interface, but we're just going to basically say that this state right here, update UI, is going to be responsible for taking the variables for right now health, we're working on health, but also health, food, and money. It's going to be responsible for taking these variables and updating our screen. So how can we do that? It's remarkably easy. We can just take our health text uh, label here, our health text text, and drag and drop it into the state. And when I let go, it's going to bring up a little menu. And it's basically providing us the different components from, from our object. And the one that we're interested in here is the text. So I can come down here to text, and under UI, you're going to find at the very, very, very bottom here, UI text set text. And I just click that like that. And you'll see that the game object here, where it says specify game object, has been specified as the health text. So it's going to match here. And it's asking us what text we want. So you could just type something in here. And if I run this, you can see that, it, that the word type is showing up here. It's not big enough to have everything. But you, it'll take whatever text I'm putting in here, and it's just replacing health text with that. But we don't want the text here, right? We want to pick from a variable. So that's what this little icon does here. We say use variable. I can come here to text, and notice it doesn't give me any here directly, and that's because text is a string. You know, text is not a number. But we can do a conversion right here, and it's, it'll say convert health, just like that. So we're going to convert that numeric value over to a text or string value so that it can display. So now when we run, we see 100 here. And we know that it's getting it from the variable because in the label itself here, the text 
object I've hard coded health. We can also very um, verify that by coming down to here and just changing this to 95, for example, and running. And now we'll see that our health starts out at 95. So it's really simple you know, concept, but it's also very powerful. The ability to create the variables here that you need to store, and then the ability here using your UI text set text to s display those variables and update them on the screen. So now let's do the same thing for our food. So how would we do that? Well, we'll begin. We just have to come here and make sure that our update UI state is selected. We come here to our food label text. Actually, this is what we need to f do first, and we need to divide it up as well. So let's come here to food label text, get rid of the 100, like that. And then let's get our duplicate here, duplicate it, drag it over and change this now to say food text like that and change our text value to a placeholder just as food like that if we run it now we'll see that health is going to stay the 95 and our food is just the placeholder that we set we come here to our game manager and just drag our food text right in here as the second action in our state. We go to text, we go to UI, we go to UI text set text. We don't want to just specify text that we want to update the label with. Instead we want to pull it from a variable and we know we want to pull it from our food variable. Just like that we can run it and we'll see that our food's a zero because we haven't set the value in our variable. So let's do that. Come over here to variables click on food notice it's at zero we just change that to a hundred and now when we rerun it we get a hundred for our food one of the things we can also do is we can display the items that we need to change and and work with by displaying them in the inspector so we come here to inspector and click inspector go to health and click inspector and we'll do money as well and click inspector and if we go over here now under controls you'll see here are our values so you can expose the variables that you want someone to be able to change and to indicate that they are ones that should be able to be changed within your game right here so if we decide this way we wanted health to start out 100 as well we can change it here and we don't have to go digging down inside of variables here and that would also tell you that if we have other variables set in here that are not ex in, exposed in the inspector that those variables probably are not ones that are designed to change the game options or how the gameplay should be but are more variables that are designed uh, privately basically just to manage the game so these are out here now let's go ahead here and I'm going to encourage you to pause the video take um, a minute to try and do the money uh, yourself. So go ahead, try and update this state machine so it updates money and give it a go. If you have trouble, then you can watch you know, the previous two examples where I did it for health and food. But I strongly encourage you to try to do money yourself now. Stop. Pause the video. Okay, hopefully you tried it yourself. If you didn't, um, you know, maybe you're maybe you're busy and just watching this, but try, you know, to, to do these things yourself, you know, start a blank project and do all the way to this point yourself if you've never done it before because it's important that you get comfortable, you know, making these simple changes. All right, so let's do the day. Now the day, we need to kind of drag it over so we can see it. I'm going to click on it here. We're going to go to our day label text and get rid of the one off of it like that. And now we can duplicate it and drag it over and we're gonna have to do a little work here on these to get them laid out the way we want them get this one here and there's this one here and you can use these to resize things and so I'm gonna actually um, 
make this left justified again. It really doesn't matter. It's not that big a deal because it's always just going to be you know up to three or four characters anyway. So this will be our day text. Instead of day label text, this is actually the day. We're going to then put in our placeholder, run it, and we'll see how that fits together. We don't have it wired into our state machine yet. We click on our game manager object and we can see our state. We just drag our day text in. Oh, and I did say money, didn't I? Okay, so well, we'll have to do money next. So I'll do that real fast after this text, UI, set text. Now, we don't have a day variable yet, but that's okay. I'll just come back over here, click this. Notice it says, um, you know new variable here so I can just click this and say new variable and add it on the fly here new variable day just like that and that creates the variable I just have to come over here and make sure it's the right type and it isn't notice how it made it a, a, a string well we want day to be an integer because we're going to implement it and it's we're going to warn us this variable is used are you sure you want to change it sure we want to change it and we'll come back to our state here and now we ended up having to do this anyway because of the type. But you can't add variables on the fly. It's just going to always add them as strings. You have to change them anyway. All right, so there's our day. We can run it, make sure it works. We can see day zero. We don't want day zero. We want day one. Just change it here and run. So day might be an example of a variable we wouldn't put over here in the controls because we always want to start in day one so we would leave it out of the inspector here and now we do money and we'll be done so money label text we duplicate it drag it over maybe like that we'll take this one I'm making it hard on myself it's mostly just so I'm, I'm, I can keep these together down there and I have to worry about them so I'll just move this one in here we'll left justify it and change it to money and this one probably does need more room so let's move this back get rid of our hard-coded I use the word hard-coded meaning that we've not used a variable there and instead of hard-coded that value in get rid of that move our money in like that because we know our money is going to start getting longer and I'll show you later how we can add these together maybe it would be better to have uh, these not as separate objects it might make them easier to display at this point it really doesn't matter so much we're just trying to get the values out and learn how all this works so there's our placeholder for our money let's give it a name makes sense money text just like that and now when we go back to our game manager we already have the variable definitely try to do this yourself if you haven't done it just drag our money text in set the text UI UI text set and set the variable convert money and now let's run it and there we go there's our money and our day now those aren't lined up good I probably would want it would drive me nuts I think if I did that for very long so let's go ahead and see how to do that we actually we'll do that in another lecture we got it looking okay for now we'll just align it like this something like that you'll see it it'll turn out okay it's not that big a deal right money day we'll work on making it look better later as long as it's functional that's what matters right now so in our next lecture we'll continue to build up our state machine we'll wire up our buttons so that we can actually beg for money and make some money in our game